back and today we getting spicy with Doom by Frank Herbert. Alright, let me explain something real quick. Like 20,000 years in the future, humanity done spread their sh to other planets run by hood rich crews called houses, who all taking their orders from the Emperor. This whole space hood run off a dank herb called melange, or spice on the streets. See, the only place you can score spice is up on the planet of Arrakis, where there ain't nothing but a bunch of sandworm riding thugs called Fremen. These cats just sitting on their asses waiting for a legendary savior called Lazan al Gaib, who's gonna turn Arrakis into a water filled paradise. Now, there also be a clique of fine biddies called Benny Jezzeret, who's strapped with some banging superpowers. Word is, they trying to breed the first ever male super dude called the Quizots Hotterock whose power's gonna be the swollest of the swole. So one day the Emperor tell Duke Leto of House Atreides that he now top dog of spice mining on Arrakis. Right before they bounce over to the planet, the Duke's Benny G. Jessica puts their son Paul to an old school test. And truth is, Paul got a mind way beyond your everyday thug. Things ain't quite what they were expecting on Arrakis. Turns out the Emperor playing dirty, and what he really plotting is to waste all the players of House Atreides. But instead of coming out and saying it to their face, the Emperor puts his muscle behind the homies of House Harkonnen, who have been beefing with the Atreides for years. The Harkonnens got an ace in the hole though, Duke L's boy Doc Yui. Fool's actually a snitch who drops the Duke right into Baron Harkonnen's lap. The Duke try to take the Baron down with him, but ends up just icing himself and some other jabronis. Feeling like a real bitch, Yui helps Paul and Jessica bust ass out of there where they join up with the Fremen on the outside. Years pass, and Paul now known on the streets as Paul Muad'Dib. Since Paul been chewing that spice all day every day, his power's been getting turned up. Along with Paul's boss fighting skills and clutch leadership, the Fremen start thinking he the legendary prophet. So MDZ rallies up his Fremen posse to stomp them Harkonnen scrubs. But before they roll out, Paul decides he gonna step up his game. So he takes a long pull from the water of life. When he wakes up from a nasty ass drink nap, his power's so damn ballin' that he can see past, present, and future like it ain't no thing. Using that sight, he find out that the Emperor done assembled a big ass army that he gonna use to put the hurt on Paul. So Paul and the Fremen hop up on their sandworms and wreck every fool they step to. Then the Emperor try to throw down, but Paul all like, Atreides nuts, son! Snatches the throne like a boss and becomes the new Emperor. Thing is, since he can see the future, he realized he ain't gonna be able to stop the bleak ass holy war ahead of him. For some brothers doing all about the planet of rockets and ecology. How any little hood can transform a planet and in turn be transformed by it. But for this thug right here, talking about my man Paul Atreides is where it's at. First off, the name Atreides comes from that player Agamemnon from Greek myth. Cause like Agamemnon, even though Paul come from a family that got solid street cred and fat stacks, his future full of tragedy. Mm. See, the thing I dig about Paul is that even though he packing some sick powers, he know he ain't all that. Check it. Muad'Dib could indeed see the future, but you must understand the limits of this power. Think of sight. You have eyes, yet cannot see without light. Just so, Muad'Dib cannot always choose to look across the mysterious terrain. But that don't stop people from riding this junk 24-7. Even though the Fremen think Paul the player of legend, they don't know the truth like he do. Eventually, Paul realized the universe ain't just the big unknown, it's the infinite unknown. And Paul pity the fool who think he or anyone else can control everything. So if like the Fremen, you betting all your chips on a savior who can't do no wrong, you straight tripping. Cause there ain't nobody that can tame the infinite. Nah, uh Even Paul with his I can see the past, present, and future bullshit can't do nothing to stop the world from the mess that lay ahead. And Paul saw how futile were any efforts of his to change any smallest bit of this. He had thought to oppose the jihad within himself. But the jihad would be. His legions would rage out from Arrakis even without him. They needed only the legend he already had become. But peeps gonna do what they do. Worship a savior who they think ain't gonna solve all their problems. Even Paul's realest homie's gonna jump at the chance to lay their free will at that player's feet. In that instant, Paul saw how Stilgar had been transformed from the Fremen Naib to a creature of the Lisan Al-Gaib, a receptacle for all and obedience. 
It was a lessening of the man, and Paul felt the ghost wind of the jihad in it. On the real, it ain't a savior we should be looking for to fix our lives. We got to use these righteous players as an inspiration, nut up, and make that change ourselves.